Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you guys all the possible ways of connecting the TP-Link Deco XC75. So you might've heard of wired or ethernet backhaul or wireless backhaul. So we're gonna go cover all of that. I have a modem here, an unmanned switch here, a bunch of ethernet cables here, and I have another router here. If you're interested in the performance of this thing, so speed test, range test, what the Deco app looks like, I've done that in a separate video, so I'll put the links for that in the description box below. I'll also put the product links in the description box below if you guys are interested in picking one up. Let's start off with what is a mesh Wi-Fi and how is that different from a normal router? So right off the bat, if you have a normal router that's giving you Wi-Fi coverage throughout your home, a mesh Wi-Fi is basically now two or more devices that are doing the same exact thing. So you have two or more devices working together to increase your Wi-Fi coverage. So you don't, no longer will have Wi-Fi dead zones throughout your home. And it really just depends on how big your home is. You might need two, you might need three, you might even need four of these. But essentially, the whole purpose of this was if you go to one edge of your house or you're in your backyard, you're really you know, having trouble connecting to Wi-Fi or it's cutting in and out, mesh Wi-Fi's are designed to solve that problem. And one of the mesh Wi-Fi's <clears throat> has to be a router. So in this case, both of these are actually technically routers. However, in the same network, only the one that's hooked up to the modem is acting as the router. The other one acts as a node or an extender or a satellite or an access point, whatever you want to call it. But even though it's physically a router, it's not acting as a router anymore. And, and this is by design. You only want to have one router in charge of your local network. Okay, so in most cases, I think, you have a router and this router is hooked up to your modem. So this is, if this is your current setup, you're basically going to remove the router because you no longer need this because the Deco itself is technically a router. So you get a Deco, you have three ports here. They are auto sensing ports. They're all gigabit speed ports. So it doesn't matter which one you use. You can use one, two, or three. I'm just gonna plug it into one. And then you're gonna follow the instructions on the Deco app, which the Deco app actually tells you how to connect it and what to connect. So once you do that, it asks you for a Wi-Fi name and a password. Now here's a hint. If you use the same Wi-Fi name or SSID and password as the router you're replacing, you can have all your devices automatically connect to this guy without changing any of their settings. However, very important, both the Wi-Fi name and the password, they're both case sensitive. So very, very important note there. Okay, so once you do that, even though you get a two pack or a three pack, you've technically now created your network, you technically now have Wi-Fi, so you're technically in a way done because this is all you need. So even if you get a two pack, you don't actually need to use both. You could just use one and you're fine with it. Okay, but in most cases, if you're getting a mesh Wi-Fi, you're probably getting it to use both. But I just did want to say that you could get away with just using one. Now, there are two ways of connecting these to each other. One is called wired or ethernet backhaul. The other one is called wireless backhaul. So basically go from any one of these remaining ports. So if I go from port two, let's say, and you go to any one of these three ports and you're done. So now you've created a wired backhaul network. And if you take your Wi-Fi device, let's just say this is two or three rooms away. If I'm closer to this one, it'll switch me here. Then I walked around my home. If I'm closer to this one, it'll switch me here. All of this is happening seamlessly. You don't need to worry about it. You connect to the Wi-Fi name and you're good to go. So this is going to give you the best possible speeds because there is an ethernet cable ensuring that. Now, the other option, which is the more convenient and easier option, is called wireless backhaul. And wireless backhaul is when this guy is always hooked up, this main router is always hooked up to the mono via ethernet, but this one is one or two rooms away, around maybe 35, 40 feet away or so, depending on your home. And if it's too far to, or too close, it'll, the app usually tells you if it's a great connection or a good connection or if it's bad or good. But essentially like maybe one or two rooms away, you plug this into the power, and it wirelessly talks to this guy. And you, you, you add it in the Deco app, but it's all pretty straightforward. If you buy it as a set, 
The Deco app already knows that, so you just power it on, it automatically connects, and you're done. Super, super simple. Now you've created a wireless backhaul network. However, in the case of the Deco, you have two options, which I go into uh, in my performance review where I do the speed test, range test, and show you guys the Deco app. So in that app, in the case of the Deco, you can actually dedicate the six gigahertz band, which is the Wi-Fi 6C band, uh, to work as a dedicated backhaul. And when you do that, typically it's faster speeds. That's what it was for me when I tested it. So you have that option in the De Deco app, but whether you use that or not, it's just going to either increase the speeds or decrease the speeds depending on uh, this connection. But at the end of the day, even with that enabled, even with the really good speeds you actually get with wireless backhaul, considering the price of this thing, this will not be as fast as the wired backhaul connection. So what do I mean by that? Well, when I'm closer to this one, let's just say this is one or two rooms away, it'll switch me here. If I do a speed test, it will be fast, but it won't be as fast as if I'm closer to this one and I'm doing a speed test. The reason for that is because when I'm here, I'm closer to this one, this one is wirelessly talking to this guy, and then this guy has to wirelessly talk to this guy for it to then go through the ethernet cable to the modem to access the internet. Whereas when I'm closer to this one, well, I'm just wirelessly jumping here, and then from here, I'm going via Ethernet to the modem. So there's one less wireless hop. So that's the disadvantage of wireless backhaul. However, considering the price of this thing, this actually did fairly well in my testing that I did. Now, let's get to answering some common questions. If you have a need for more Ethernet ports like me, what you can do is, I mean, these come with three ethernet ports on each. And you can actually use any of these three. So I should mention that too, because that, that is a question I get asked. But if this is wirelessly talking to this one, can I still use the ethernet ports from this? And the simple answer is yes, you can. So if you wanna connect, I don't know, a Fire TV cube or a laptop or an Xbox, whatever requires ethernet, even though this is wirelessly talking to it, you can still connect it to any one of these ports and connect the device and you're good to go. Now, let's just assume for the sake of this video, this uh, phone, let's just assume this is a laptop that requires ethernet. Now, when this is connected, another question I get asked is, okay, if I connect it via ethernet to the wireless backhaul node, would that be as fast as it's connected via ethernet? Uh, just basically getting the maximum possible speeds and the simple answer is no. So even though you're ensuring a very fast speed from this guy to this guy, this one still needs to wirelessly talk to this one to then go through the internet to go to the, uh, to go through the ethernet to get to the cable modem to access the internet. So that's why it's not as fast as if, if this supposed laptop for the sake of this video was connected directly to this router one because now it's going from this wire to this and this guy is going straight to the modem. So that's ensuring a better connection. Now let's say you're like me and you need more ethernet ports. Well, what do you do? Well, the simple answer is you get an unmanaged switch. So this is an eight port switch. There are different sizes, four port, five port, eight port, 16, 32, 24, I think also, and maybe, probably 48, I think I've seen a 48 as well. But basically there's a whole bunch of sizes for these. And notice I said unmanaged switch, not a managed switch. So the differences between a managed switch and an unmanaged switch is a managed switch gives you way more options, where an unmanaged switch basically gives you zero options. But a managed switch lets you create virtual LANs if you need that. You can assign IP addresses. You could do a whole bunch of stuff basically with a managed switch. That's kind of outside the scope of this video, but managed switches do cost a lot more than an unmanaged switch, which that's why it's just worth getting an unmanaged switch in most cases. Now, when you get an unmanaged switch, you hook it up to power, and there are some PoE power over ethernet switches, but I'm not getting into that. So just to keep things simple, this one hooks up to power. You hook up the ethernet, let's just say, you could pick any port you want, it does not matter. And you could pick any port you want over here, it does not matter. And now you've just expanded your port. So if you get an eight port unmanaged switch, now you have seven other usable ports. So if you wanna connect five other devices to this, a laptop, a desktop, an Xbox, a PlayStation, a Switch, a Fire TV Cube, an Apple TV, whatever you wanna connect it to, just get some ethernet cables if I can 
get these untangled, <laughs> connect it anywhere you want, plug in the device and now they're connected to your network, which is all you pretty much need to do for that. Now the cool thing is that you can also, even though again, this is wirelessly connected to this one, you can connect the unmanaged switch to any one of these ports and you can have these connected devices as well. But again, because this is wirelessly talking to this one, it's not gonna be as fast for this. However, you can do it. Another question that I get asked is, can I make an un, uh, can I use an unmanaged switch to create a wired backhaul network? And the answer is absolutely you can. So you can go from, if you go from this one, this main router to the switch, and then from the switch, you hook up any one of these ports, it does not matter, to any one of these ports, it does not matter. So in this case, now you've created a wired backhaul network and no matter where you connect it to, everything's gonna be very, very fast. And this is, this is actually the way I have mine set up. So, and you can also go from this to an unmanaged switch to another unmanaged switch to this, uh, all of that is fine. And if you've noticed, I'm actually using a Netgear unmanaged switch. Now, unmanaged switches, the brand does not matter. So I can go from Netgear to TP-Link to Eero to Nest Wi-Fi Pro to Asus to the Netgear Orbi, it does not matter. So the unmanaged brand name does not matter. I can even go from this to a Netgear to a TP-Link unmanaged switch back to this and it's still fine. Probably the question I get the most asked is, can I go from modem to unmanaged switch and then from the unmanaged switch go to the first one which is gonna be my router and the other one? Uh, and the simple answer is no. The modem needs to connect to the router first. This is the most important step. This needs to happen. You have a lot of free play after this. So as long as the modem is hooked up to your unmanaged switch, from here on out, you have a lot of choices. You can go from here to the switch, to this guy. You can go from this guy to this guy. You can go from this guy to another unmanaged switch, to another one, and then back to this one. You have a lot of free play. The most important thing is for these two to be connected to each other. Can I mix wired and wireless backhaul? And the answer is yes to that. And the Deco app will automatically determine that. So even, even if this was, let's just say, a wired backhaul connection, and for some odd reason you wanted to move this and it couldn't be wired anymore, the Deco will automatically pick that up. There's nothing you need to do. There's no option you need to change. It will automatically determine it, I'll figure it out for you, and you should be good to go. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully that answered your questions. If you guys have any additional questions, please leave in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.